Hey there, hi there, ho there, and welcome to the second in a little short three video series. I am Jonathan Bocher from PlayGuitar.com and this series is kind of demonstrating a little bit of what we're talking about in the Dynamic Rhythm Guitar Course, which you can find over at PlayGuitar.com slash Dynamics. In the first video, we talked about how you can take a simple strum pattern, just eighth notes, right? And using a few different techniques, you can really start to Give it a little bit of life, um, looking at these chugs and, and uh, some palm muting and things like that. Well, in this one, I want to talk about yet another way that you can start adding in a little bit of extra zest into those very simple chord progressions. We were looking at a chord progression of E minor and C major. Nothing too special there, right? Well, there is if we start adding in some chord modifications. So I'm going to give you a couple new chords in this lesson today. And we're going to start off with this E minor here. And hopefully that's familiar to you. It's, it's a you know, very common standard chord. And um, you can play it a couple different ways, of course. But uh, today we're going to use our first and second fingers. And uh, that frees up our third and fourth fingers. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our third finger here on the third fret of the second string. And often when I'm playing it just like this, I'll actually just use my pinky just because it's a little bit more comfortable. But either one works. If you want to use your third or your fourth finger, as long as you're getting that, that D note right there and you're getting it to ring out clearly, you're not you know, jumbling up onto other strings or muting out other strings or getting buzzes and stuff like that, then uh, it doesn't matter which, string or which finger you use. And what we're doing is we're adding a D onto this E minor chord. Now D, is a seventh in relation to the E, which is the root note, right? If you go up, well, there's eight, eight notes in an octave. So E to E is eight, go down one, that's seven, right? E to D, seven, or you could count up to all the way through. I don't have time to get into the theory today, but we do in the course. Um, anyways, what we're doing is we're adding that seventh onto an E minor. So we get E minor seven. It's a nice sounding chord. So there's a normal E minor. And there's your E minor seven. Well, we can also modify that just a little bit. There's one other variation of the E minor seven chord that I really like using. And that's where we put our third and fourth fingers on that third fret, covering the first and second strings. And this time we're adding a G, which is here on the third fret of the first string. But that G doesn't change the name of the chord because we actually already have a G. If you look, the open G on the third string. So we're not actually adding any new notes. Okay, so we've got two variations of E minor, plus of course the E minor, you know, standard E minor. Gives us three chords. And uh, let's quickly go through a couple on the C major here too, right? We've got our C major should be familiar with that one as well. What we're going to do is we're going to add a ninth, okay? So a C, and then we're going to add in that same D. Second string, third fret. And this time we're going to use our fourth finger, because it's the only one available. And, um, yeah, so that's uh, a C9. C add nine, that is, and um, another version of the C add nine is simply to go um, second second finger on the third fret of the fifth string, first finger on the second fret fourth string, third finger on that D, third fret of the second string, and fourth finger on the th third fret of the first string, okay? And that is C add nine. And of course you could play that other one that I showed you simply like this if you want to. Um, this version here works really nicely if you're coming from an, uh, the open C chord. You want to add on that D. But if you're going to play it as 
a standalone chord and you're not coming from this open chord, you might try playing it this way instead because um, that gives you that option. So we've got a few new chords, right? But they're still related to the, to the E minor and the C. So you can actually play them over top of E minor and C major. So if our chord progression is E minor, C major, one bar of each, we can easily slip in these substitutions, these chord modifications, slip them in in place of the normal E minor and the normal C major, and they give a little bit of a different flavor to what it is that we're playing. So let's turn on that uh, drum track again, and what we're going to do is we'll just go through the chord progression using that... Uh, I'll probably use a, a strum pattern like this, like chug, chug, full strum, chug, chug, full strum, chug, chug, full strum, okay? So fairly simple that way. But um, I do want that full strum in there so that I, I get access to some of these notes that we're changing. Let's turn on the drum track and see what it sounds like. We'll go through E minor and C major open. Then we'll go through the first variation of both chords that I show you. And then we'll go through the second variation of both chords that I showed you. And have a listen and see how simply adding these extra notes in the higher frequencies changes things, right? And it makes things kind of build up a little bit. A few simple chord modifications really started to bring the song to a slightly different place. Simple chords, simple progression, add in a few little variations and all of a sudden you're saying something a little bit more interesting. Add that on top of your strumming techniques, now we're getting somewhere. All right, so that's video two. Stay tuned for video three. You can learn more about dynamic rhythm guitar at playguitar.com dynamics. We'll catch you again next time.